the potential return of Warzone, be able to search for custom games in Campaign, the potential return of the Primordial or Mendicant Bias in Halo Infinite, and could the Banshee actually break the open world of Infinite as well? Well, I answer that and a bunch of other questions in this video, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again. Today we're doing a different kind of video. We're doing a Q&A video with the community here. I went on my community tab on my channel here guys and I asked the question, do you have any questions involving Halo, MTC, Halo Infinite? Let me know. I'm, a, I'm the information guy so I could probably help you out there a bit. And you guys answered quickly. So I picked out some comments from that post and put it in this video. If you want to catch the next time we ask some questions on the channel to get your chance to be put into a video, make sure you check out that page guys. I will be picking out questions from that same post in in future videos as well as well as we probably will know some more with this future update coming from halo infinite so let's get right into the content here first question is from dog in the sleep do you think warzone will return in infinite actually had a lot of fun with it i'd love a warzone flood firefight where when players die their bodies become infected and become more flood Personally, I really don't think Warzone will be making a return in Halo Infinite, mainly because of the weapons that we had in Halo 5. The big part about Halo 5 Warzone was kind of ranking your character up and utilizing these overpowered weapons as you played better in the game. I mean, they also were kind of meant to sell rec packs as well, so then it gets you to pay more money for the microtransactions. Well, now there are no loot boxes or that kind of form of microtransactions. I think they'll be more straightforward paid microtransactions like we see with like a battle pass or individual purchases but so without the weapon upgrades that you get throughout playing then you all you have is like the ai that you play against and honestly the ai was kind of invalidated because it wasn't really involved with the gameplay much and you really kind of go out of your way to go kill them and oftentimes you put all the damage in one guy sneaks in one shot takes away all of the points it kind of is annoying to deal with but i think if they completely reworked warzone i think it could be a fun mode but i don't see it coming back especially since we had a leak from a known insider clobril said this to my limited knowledge instead the team is creating a big team battle 2.0 mode which is a better fit for halo including massively enhanced vehicular combat squad spawning incoming pelican drops and many more surprises. Now, obviously don't take it exactly from what he's saying, but what it sounds like what Clover probably has an idea of is, is that the team at 343 is working on some big scale multiplayer mode. What that is, maybe BTB 2.0, maybe it's Warzone 2.0, something along those lines. And knowing what we know from the sandbox development update for Halo Infinite, talking about enhanced vehicular combat, well, that kind of plays directly in line with what was mentioned in the February update for Halo Infinite. So it sounds like, what, like maybe Pelican drops, maybe some way to kind of reintegrate the idea of upgrading your character throughout the battle, while also not breaking the game with crazy overpowered weapons in a way. There are many different ways 343 can go about making a big team mode. It just depends on how exactly they do it and how it's balanced and if it works out well. Base Dog FPV asked, will the custom game search be available to find campaign lobbies? Now, I don't believe that the campaign search will be an option when it comes to the custom game browser as it's mainly focused on multiplayer experiences when it comes to playing your typical arena style gameplay and also the unique modes that are there. Uh, from all the mockups that we've seen of the custom game browser, none of them showcase anything involving campaign. So I think it's gonna be mainly a multiplayer focused kind of feature. Though I would love to see it as an option. That'd be pretty sweet. Though then again, like playing campaign co-op online for MCC really isn't that fun of a play because the person who, who's playing off host has such a laggy experience that it's really not that enjoyable. And they're really only fun because you're playing with your friend, not because you're playing Halo. Kyle Whitaker asked, do you think Primordial or Mendicant Bias will be in Halo Infinite? Well, one, I don't think we're gonna see the Primordial unless there's some huge retconning that happens when it comes to Halo's lore. That's because what actually happened with the Primordial is that he was captured by the Forerunners, put in a reverse stasis form or whatever, and then they basically disintegrated his body completely, like a reverse aging kind of process kind of thing and killed him that way. Though somehow his consciousness was still able to exist and assimilated in with the Flood. So in a way we have interacted with the Primordial through the Grave Mind in a way, uh, just because his, so Primordial's consciousness is with the Grave Mind. So that 
is kind of how we worked with that. Uh, so I would not expect to see him in any way or form unless it's completely retconned, which I don't expect to see that happening either. Uh, Mendicant Bias, though, on the other hand, I could definitely see happening with Halo Infinite as he does have a major housing location on Zeta Halo. And from my memory, he's still kind of like around in some capacity. I think he's like captured in some way or it needs to be unlocked. You know, some space magic probably needs to happen to bring him back. And also in some of these trailers, we did see these three red dots on Chief Pfizer in a similar kind of pattern that we've seen in the lore and comic books of Mendicant Bias. Obviously, it's kind of reversed upside down. Uh, this could just be like the orientation of where his device is set up. I mean, it's just the artistic styling that they want to put in the game itself. Uh, but just seeing those three red dots like that just really makes me feel that like it's meant to get biased and he's going to be in Halo Infinite. That's just my feeling. No way to absolutely confirm that, but that's just my feeling. Supreme Halo asks, when did you start playing Halo? A question about me? Well, this is it. This is different. I actually started playing Halo back in the fall of 2001. I didn't get the game on launch. I actually got it as a Christmas gift back in the day when I told my dad that I wanted to have the new Xbox because it was the new console and I wanted to have the newest console. I didn't even know what games I wanted. I just wanted the new Xbox. And so my dad asking the store clerk there, asking him like, hey, what's the killer game you gotta have? He's The guy's like, oh, you gotta get Halo. Well, maybe if it wasn't for that store clerk, I may have not been so addicted to Halo because ever since then, like really since Halo 1 till Halo 3 in 2009, I really only played Halo. I mean, yeah, I played other games as well, but Halo has always been my main go-to. Countless hours of co-op with my brother in campaign, or countless hours of system linking with my friends in my mom's basement, uh, just playing all night long, CTF, Blood Gulch, Halo 1. I mean, couldn't get enough of it. And so I've lived throughout the entirety of Halo's experience. I've experienced every launch, essentially. I've experienced the ups and the downs of the franchise. Halo's journey as a franchise kind of correlates along with my journey as a gamer as well. But Halo was the first game that really made me like a gamer. Before I just kind of played casually just to spend time, but like Halo was something completely different and changed my idea of what video games can be. I'm not sorry, asks how will the Banshee work in the open world sandbox? I've wondered about this as well, uh, just mainly because from what we've seen so far, most of the gameplay has been focused on ground traversal, as in like either on foot or on vehicles. Uh, we do know there are going to be Banshees within the campaign as well. Stated here in the recent development update for Halo Infinite saying, Stuck in a canyon trying to get to a base, the Banshee makes a quick up and over. So this makes me wonder what are the limitations of Banshees? Is there going to be like a height limitation? They can only get so high? Is there going to be fuel they're going to have to deal with or something like that? Because what's going to stop you from getting a Banshee from point A all the way across the other side of the map? It would be kind of breaking traversal and the open world in a way. Unless it's like one of those things you unlock at or get a hold of at the very end of the campaign. So then like once you play through the entire story, you can kind of just jump in and play out however you want. And in that case, yeah, sure, let the person have a banshee and fly around however they like. But I wonder how aerial vehicles are going to be limited within the initial playthrough of Halo Infinite's campaign. With it being some open world and being able to sound like you can kind of go wherever you want, it just makes me wonder how traversal is going to work with aerial vehicles. 343 can go about do the, doing this a uh, hundred different ways to kind of put different types of limitations or just get it towards the end or some kind of way. But uh, it's definitely something that I thought about as well. And it's certainly concerning for me as just how it may break the gameplay or how the gameplay will work out. But we'll just kind of have to wait and see until we know more about Halo Infinite's gameplay. Frenchy Bomb asks, do you think it would have been easier to let us change the colors of individual pieces instead of developers having to make thousand different coatings? I mean, would it be easier to just let 343 just give us primary, secondary, maybe tertiary color options from a you know, primary color palette? Yeah, that's the easier way to go about doing everything. But one thing I've always actually kind of applauded 343 on is their ambition of how to try to innovate on Halo. I mean, sometimes it's worked, sometimes it really hasn't worked. And it seems like they never really tried to choose the easy way out of things, which again, is beneficial and also can be detrimental. I just don't see why we can't really have like primary, secondary colors for uh, as your options because I think just having those colors would be kind of boring. And then these armor coatings would really help customize your character in certain ways. You can get those armor customizations from like 
doing challenges, grinding out some kind of seasonal pass or something like that to showcase your dedication to the game. So then when someone does have an armor coating, they really stand out compared to just like your basic person having just like primary secondary colors. But as it stands right now, all we have are armor coatings. And so it just kind of depends on exactly how they go about doing this. We still don't have the full story on armor coatings. From what it sounds like right now, there are some benefits and there are some negatives, but I don't think we've seen all the positives when it comes to it. We certainly know the negative part, but what's going to be the upside to it? How are you going to make yourself stand out? And also, how's the UI going to work with armor coatings? I guarantee you the game is going to be designed for you to not have every single armor coating that's in the game. So when the game launches, you might hear some, oh my God, price tags of how much it costs to have all the customization in Halo Infinite. But the idea I think is to offer so much customization, especially with coatings that you're not able to utilize all of it. So you can kind of just pick and choose what you like and that will make it to your Spartan, but they also need to make enough options to where what you do choose makes you look unique enough within the world for your customization to make it feel like it's your Spartan. I've equated uh, armor coatings to like cookie dough in a way. So think of it like this. I always thought like be able to choose your color and the way you want your Spartan to look exactly equates to like making a cookie from scratch, making cookie dough from scratch, like the getting the flour, the butter, turning it all together, and then you you make the cookie, you bake it, you feel like you made that cookie. I feel like with armor coating, so like here's some pre-made cookie dough that you know you do like chocolate chip cookies, right? So here's your chocolate chip cookie. We also have, you know, ones with M&Ms in it, and all these other kind of variations. All you gotta do is just cut it up, put it in the oven, you're good to go. But you don't really feel like you made that cookie, right? That's kind of how I feel about armor coatings at once. So you're still getting a cookie. It still tastes and looks great, but one has a little bit more sentimental value to it. Jeez Demon 25 says, Kevin, if your channel gets really big off Infinite, will you still remember us? I will absolutely will remember as many of you guys as I possibly can. We're inching up on 20,000 subscribers on this channel, and it's been kind of crazy for the past two years. Last three years is when I've actually really started seeing growth on here. I recently just celebrated my 10 year anniversary of being on YouTube. Yeah, I've been doing YouTube videos for 10 whole years now. The first seven years were a complete waste of time pretty much and just really just kind of having fun with making videos. But the last three years, I've really tried honing my skills and really tried making something out of this platform. It seems to be kind of working. And it's all thanks to you guys for coming by, checking out the channel, subscribing, liking the videos, commenting, and just interacting with the content. I try to read almost all the comments. I I try to reply to most of them, at least give you guys like a like to show that I read your comments because I truly do appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to come watch these videos. There's a million different things you can do with your free time, a million different things to do on the internet. And the fact you come by here to come check out some Halo news and information, I just really appreciate it. And in a way, these kind of Q&A videos is my way to kind of get you guys interacted with the content as well. So it's not just me talking to a wall the whole time. Hopefully get you guys involved with it and get also get the kind of a pulse of what you guys are questioning about, what you want to know more about. A great way to interact with me directly is actually coming by my Twitch channel where I do stream every Tuesday and Thursday evening. We're going to be doing some Halo Wars in the next few couple days just because I want to play through those campaigns before the release of Halo Infinite. We're doing a lot of MCC on there. Every time I do a live stream, uh, you know, you guys can jump in and play with me and we can do we do a lot of btb lobbies we do some 4v4 lobbies and stuff like that sometimes we do custom games so if you ever want to interact with me directly that's the best way to go about doing it link in the description down below for my twitch channel guys if you guys have missed any content from me recently or been out of the loop of halo for the last few days or so check out the videos on the screen right here got a link to all my news and informational videos right there so thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one Ciao.